<coughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Khaled Sarayedin. I'm the CTO of uh, OptInvent, a company that uh, creates, uh, we are creating, developing, and uh, producing smart glasses and mainly display optics for AR. Uh, this talk sh normally should be uh, given by my associate and co-founder, uh, Kevin Mirza, but unfortunately he couldn't be with us today. He apologized for that. So I hope to give you uh, the best translation of his idea about this talk that is uh, smart glasses, disruption, or distraction. So. Uh, it's not working. Okay. Okay. So I start with a very a few, uh, I mean, basic uh, question about AR. Maybe many of you uh, understand that, but uh, uh, actually there is many definition for AR, uh, augmented reality, mixed reality. But to put it very simple, it's an enhanced vision of reality. In this picture, you see HoloLens uh, device where the user could see on the right a kind of menu to interact with uh, this icon. So this menu, this uh, uh, image is floating in, uh, in total transparency in his field of view. Uh, so uh, let's go further. So uh, augmented reality is uh, finally is uh, intersection between the real and the digital world. Uh, it's finally, it's a subset of the reality. This is the main point here. Now, uh, this has been said, there is what we call the AR dream. In this picture, uh, we have our friend Andy Gschold from uh, Wikitude He's walking around Singapore and having the world coming alive around him, getting direction where to go, a contextual ad, and some suggestion, for example, on a bar he may want to visit. So this is a bunch of augmentation on real building, uh, several advertising, uh, street navigation, and even virtual lighting. So this is a kind of wonderful world around us, it's like a dream. But the question today, where we are today? Today, we are there. The reality of AR, mainly for consumer, is, uh, is much less sexy than that. It is about catching Pokemon, <laughs> holding, holding a smartphone, and playing Pokemon Go. So uh, this is what consumer perceive the augmented reality today. Um, how many of you remember this film from the 80? Okay, a few, yeah, good. <laughs> so this is a Tron. This is what the future was supposed to be or to look like, a total merge between um, the real and the digital. A human and computer will merge in our uh, in, uh, conscience. It means this, the idea is not really new, is, is really not recent, is really old, right? So uh, now if we uh, ask the question, is the reality the problem? Uh, so why we ask this question? Because as we said, the AR is part of the reality, but in everyday life, we spend a lot of money trying to escape from reality. We, we, we spend million in music, game, and movies. All these things help us to escape reality, except augmented reality is all about reality today. Uh, <clears throat> so take the red bill. This is the Matrix film. In fact, we, we all want to take the red pill just like Neo in Matrix and like Alice in Wonderland. So uh, up to now, we talk about the previous slide about the dream, the AR dream, the reality with Pokemon. 
but uh, we know that uh, in our conscience, we would like to be outside the, the, the reality. So uh, this is, in fact, this is uh, not coincidence that the best known AR app uh, today is a game, if you ask around you people. And uh, this is, will bring us to the smart glasses subject. So, <coughs> you know smart glasses is supposed to be the hardware device that bring the AR uh, to the consumer. But, uh, so they have been hyped as being the ultimate AR. Uh, normally they should have a transparent stream, allow you to be uh, mobile, getting all the information in front of your eye. So it's fantastic. But where we are today, if you, if you, uh, uh, so again, here, uh, the value proposition is very strong. It means the smart glasses should allow you not to look down for uh, uh, smart glasses, for a smartphone, but to look, uh, uh, to, to, to have the head up and to look the, the eyes out and to give you all the information that you need. So this is very powerful concept uh, for mobility. Now, uh, this is also a part of the uh, paradigm shift today in mobility where we are starting with the desktop on the desk, the laptop in the lab, the smart uh, phone on the pocket and the, we get much closer to the brain by having uh, something close to the eye. Now, what is the state of the art, if you, you ask the question, about smart glasses today? <coughs> so the state of the art is not really, uh, I mean, revolutionary. On the, on the left, you see uh, HoloLens, I mean, uh, they, uh, if you look to the guy, they are not really look, uh, look great. Vizix on the right is not bad. And on, on, on the top bottom, uh, the left bottom, you have uh, glasses, which is a fashion show from, um, uh, for Google Glass. And uh, on, the, on the right here, you see uh, Magic Leap, who raised it $2.5 billion dollars for such a great looking uh, device that we all want to wear, right? <laughs> you, you believe. So, uh, so, so there is a problem, right? So there's a problem uh, about the uh, form factor, about uh, how people really in consumer could use this, right? Even for Google, who has really the smallest form factor uh, for, for, uh, for the glasses, if you look to the ladies, uh, which was, presented in a, in a fashion show, the ladies look really like a cyborg and not really uh, very friendly. So today, today really, we are mainly on the professional market. I mean, smart glasses or something equivalent like this product we are developing in OptInvent is only for, uh, uh, for a professional market because today, uh, the, uh, for the consumer, the product are not really ready. ready. So this product, for example, is, could be uh, hooked up in, on a um, safety cap. Uh, you could uh, put it up and down, and uh, it's mainly for logistic, remote assistance, training, uh, checklist, medical, and so on. So uh, this type of product should work uh, with other like Vuzix because it's dedicated to professional. Now, if we back to uh, consumer space, uh, this picture is uh, from Google, Google advertising uh, film uh, when they introduced the Google Glass. So you see a lot of icon uh, in front of the, uh, the user, too much icon trying to do uh, much and up dealing with nothing at all. And uh, of course we love Google, but I think we, the, the, uh, they forget how to introduce the product. So uh, I can show you 
the counter example, this is famous picture is uh, when uh, Steve Jobs introduced the, um, the iPhone. The message was very simple. So he introduced the iPhone in a way every, everyone could understand it. Music, phone, internet in the same device, right? So this is not really the case of any uh, smart glasses product today. Uh, again, if you, if you look to this lady, uh, <coughs> so smart glasses have uh, really some uh, stiff competition from really normal glasses. I mean, uh, these are damp glasses, but this lady looks very smart comparing to, if I show you the other picture before, to this lady there, okay? Uh, okay, so uh, let's have another lesson from Apple. This is uh, Mr. Uh, Johnny Ive, the head designer of Apple, uh, who really understand the consumer field very well. He said, uh, the face is the wrong place for wearable tech. Uh, so, uh, unless for the moment, for uh, from now to maybe five years, because the technology is not really uh, there. From our side, you know, we are a small company, OptInvent. We try to do it with technology, but we work a lot on these uh, problems of ergonomic, uh, people how to accept the product, and we think uh, we tend from our side to the same objective. We think uh, the head is, or the face is, is a problematic uh, place to put wearable tech. Here an example of what we did. <coughs> this is a disrupting the experience. It means there is a form factor that consumers uh, already wear, right? Uh, that is big and bulky that is uh, the, uh, the headphone, it's not the smart glasses. So uh, this product called Aura X is a new kind of device that will revolutionize the, the mobile music experience and it should be the first uh, consumer product with AR capability. Our uh, vision is the AR application will come naturally after introducing a product with some use case that is, for example, uh, uh, watching video clip, having some casual gaming. Again, if I be back to the, the product, you have, it's like a uh, normal headphone that brings you uh, a good sound and you have an arm that flip up and down. So you could, you, you could see your music, this is the, uh, what we call see your music, not only hear you, your music. And you could connect, of course, to internet, have all the information. But you cannot give to the consumer uh, a message that you can do everything. So if you, you tell the consumer you can do everything, the consumer couldn't get any uh, really precise message. Uh, so um, again, so uh, the, the, uh, this is also a, a picture of the product. And, uh, we have a booth here in um, AWE. We have a prototype working. We have a pleasure to present you this and to see. This is an experience product. It means you have to really wear it to see how it works in order to understand what you can do with it. I think that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions for Khalid? What's the resolution? What's the resolution? The resolution of the product? Yep. Well, this is good. Uh, this is wide VGA. But you know, I'm sorry to ask, but this is not really important for, for the consumer. They need a kind of field of view in order to get a good video. And actually, when you talk about resolution, is not the nature of resolution that is important. Is the what we call the pixel per degree? How much pixel per degree? Is it uh, 42 pixel per degree? Any more questions? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ali. Thank you a lot.